The Lord be with you. Hello everyone and welcome to CPC's online worship service for Sunday, June 28th. I appreciate that you have set this time apart to uh, be a part of this and I am grateful for the opportunity to spend this online worship time with you. So thanks for tuning in today and welcome, welcome to all. I just want to share a reminder to everyone that our church's session has uh, extended our suspension of on-site worship and other activities through the end of July. So any change to that will be announced immediately, but for now, the way things stand uh, is that through the end of next month, through the end of July, on-site activities continue to be suspended. Meanwhile, uh, a reminder that every Friday from the church office, an email is sent to everybody that, uh, uh, at, that contains all the news and the announcements. We're mailing hard copies of the announcements to anyone who has told us that they do not have email. So uh, please read this Friday email, this Friday announcement email carefully each week for uh, all the latest church news. So again, a welcome to all of you. Let's begin our worship now with prayer. Please pray with me. Oh God, you always keep watch over us. You know our joys, you know our sorrows. We worship you, oh God. We adore you and we praise you. Help us each to receive your love and your discipline. We ask you to refresh us, one and all, with unexpected and unmerited mercies. Startle us with new commands for our obedience, and startle us with a fresh sense of your grace. We offer this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
I was watching a television talk show and on the show, the host was interviewing a man who works at a large university here in, in America. And at the university, he runs a continuing education center for teachers. His job is to equip teachers to stick with teaching over the long haul, to persevere, to keep at the tough tasks of education. Well, the television interviewer asked the man what he had learned in all his years of working with teachers. And this man responded saying, I have learned an important truth. I have learned that good teachers are in love with the task of sowing seeds. They must be enthralled with the task of sowing seeds and they must be content to leave the harvesting to someone else. Good teachers spend years sowing seeds, but hardly ever do they get to see the harvest. Well, those words made a lot of sense to me. I found it easy to relate to what he had said because most of the good that preachers do, if indeed preachers do any good, most of the good that preachers do is good that they will never see. I mean, I cast out my little words among you and they bounce around a bit and then, then there is silence. And if those words take root, if they bear fruit in someone's life or if they move somebody forward to a new place in their spiritual life, more often than not, I don't know about it at least not right away. Sometimes it takes years. Sometimes it takes years for a word to germinate in the soul, to take root, to come to harvest. And usually, I never know about it. Now, having said all that, I want to read to you a parable of Jesus parable of the sower and the seeds is found in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Listen now for God's word to you. Jesus went to the lakeside where he sat down to teach. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it while the crowd stood on the shore. He used parables to tell them many things. Once there was a man who went out to sow grain. As he scattered the seed in the field, some of it fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some of it fell on rocky ground where there was little soil. The seeds soon sprouted because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it burned the young plants, and because the roots had not grown deep enough, the plants soon dried up. Some of the seed fell among thorn bushes, which grew up and choked the plants. But some seeds fell in good soil, and the plants bore grain. Some had 100 grains, others 60, and others 30. And Jesus concluded, listen then, if you have ears. Well, when it comes to the parable that Jesus told, the parable of the sower and the seeds, I think one thing's pretty obvious, one thing's for sure, and that is that Jesus is quite realistic about things. He knew that much is wasted in the gospel and wasted in life. In nature, millions more seeds are produced than can possibly germinate and grow to maturity. 
Or think about the hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of flowers and, and birds and fish. It's amazing, this, this immense variety in nature, the sheer numbers, the diversity, the excessive lavishness of the way that the world is put together, all these colors, so much variety, such extravagance. It seems impractical. It seems overdone. It, it seems almost a waste. We can say the same about love, too, you know. There is much waste in love. There's never a one-to-one a -one return on love, <clears throat> whether it's the love that Creator God shit, uh, showers on creation or, or if it's the love between human beings. Think about it. Most of our best efforts, our most loving acts are, well, <clears throat> they're wasted. They go unnoticed. They hardly ever bear immediate results. Let's say you do a kind deed. Let's say you, you take a little extra time to help a stranger find an item in, in the grocery store, or you stop and help somebody on the side of the road with a flat tire. Well, nobody rushes over to make you a good citizen of the year just because you showed some kindness toward another person. It seems like a, a waste of time. Or suppose you volunteer to teach a children's class at church. Nobody does a heartwarming special about you on 60 Minutes. You're wasting your time, right? So it would seem. And Jesus knew that. And yet, and yet, sometimes in unexpected ways and in, in surprising places, sometimes good deeds do produce fruit. Sometimes a harvest beyond belief. And Jesus knew that too. Most of a teacher's efforts are, are wasted, so to speak, right? The lessons taught, the words spoken to the class, most of it appears to, to fall on deaf ears. And even if anything is remembered years later by the students, rarely will the teacher know about that harvest. And yet, I want you to look inside yourself because in all of us, the things we do remember from our teachers become the very heart and the very soul of our lives. I think of my high school days, 11th grade. Fact is, I don't remember more than one sentence out of a whole year with Mrs. Thelma Taylor in American history class when I was 16 years old. An hour a day I had her for my junior year of high school. I remember nothing except this one sentence. She used to say, life is too short not to take risks and live boldly. That's what stuck in my mind. That's what I remember. And no, I can't say that I've always done what that single sentence from Mrs. Taylor urges, but I do remember how those words grabbed me by the collar and shook me up and down and made a difference in my 16-year-old world. A single sentence, one seed, a lifelong harvest. Jesus told the parable, and then he concluded with these words, listen then, if you have ears. Well, are you listening? Are you listening? Because it only takes a few seeds, you know? <clears throat> just a seed or two, that's all. When just a seed or two get into the ground and germinate, they can produce a harvest, just a few small seeds. And what I want to say is that you and I, 
You and I are sowing seeds all the time. We have more seed to sow than you know. And even if it seems like a waste of time to sow good seeds, it only takes a few to make a huge difference. Imagine. Imagine maybe, maybe one church can influence a whole town for the better. Or a single lesson in a Sunday school class could radically alter someone's life. <clears throat> Or a simple word of encouragement, just a, a, almost a throwaway gesture of concern, a small act of caring, that could significantly alter a person's life. It could change another person. What did Jesus have to work with? Just 12 disciples, and in the end, only 11 of them worked out, but that's the little group he used for what? Start changing the world, that's all. One book, one movie, one person, one throwaway sentence, one seemingly insignificant good deed, a single loving gesture, one touch, just one, one seed. And the harvest can be startling. I think our tendency is to focus on all the seed that gets wasted, to focus on the seed that gets wasted, all the seed that fails to bear fruit, and all the efforts that show no visible results. When you, when you think about it, this, this parable of the sower and the seeds, most of this parable speaks of seed that failed. Most of the seed didn't do a thing. But let me ask you this, is the parable a parable of failure or is it a parable of success? You could read it either way. It all depends on what you're looking for. If you focus on the waste, the failure, the disappointment of the seed that failed to take root, if you look only at that, then you miss the beauty of the seed that took root and bore a rich harvest. Some seeds fell in good soil and the plants bore grain. Some had 100 grains, others 60, and others 30. As I said, you and I sow seeds all the time. Our influence on other people. It spreads like seeds here and seeds there and seeds everywhere. And the miracle is, the miracle is that quite in spite of ourselves, God is at work in it all, working through us. God works through us, growing hope and growing love, whether we know it or not, whether we know it or not. And by the sheer grace of God, there is harvest. Given the right conditions, apple seeds become apples, and peach seeds become peaches, and a God seed becomes, well, God's seed becomes God. God right in our very midst. The world has changed. And Jesus concluded, listen then, if you have ears, listen. God is calling you to sow God seed. Amen.
Please join me now in prayer. O oh God, you are the same yesterday and today and forever in your love for us. We come to you knowing that in the midst of our confusion and worry, your love is a constant. When life seems to fall in around us, you are there to hold us up. We give you thanks. May we so open our lives to your leading that we spend all our days in happiness and peace. Wake us up, O oh God, open our eyes. You are here to guide us. Help us follow you. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. Eternal God, in our lives there are always the shadows of pain and brokenness, and at times it is overwhelming. We pray for your help to us and to others we know and love. Some are coping with illness. Some are hemmed in by financial despair. Some have trouble making wise decisions. Some have trouble learning from the past. Some wake up to pain every day. Some are beaten down by hostility and broken by old hurts. In these moments of quiet, we ask you to touch us everywhere we need healing. We ask you to remember those for whom we pray. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. And, O oh God, whenever and however we experience the deep goodness of life, when there is a harvest, help us always be appreciative. Teach us how to rejoice in your love. If our cup runs over, give us grace to say so with joy. If our life has meaning, give us grace to say so with thanksgiving. If there are those who care about us and love us and encourage us to become what we can be, give us grace to receive and relish their support and to give it back full measure in return. Lord, in your kindness, Hear our prayer. You are the God of mercy and you bear the hurt of the world. We lift our prayers to you for all those we know who have special needs. And this day we pray in particular for Kathy Peters, for Susan Daniels, for Dave Goff. We pray for Joey Martin and Steve Crate, for Leif Nielsen, for Lance Parker. We pray for Braxton Brown. We pray for the family and loved ones of Isabel Sheeler in their grief. We pray for Fran Hart and Angela Little, for Marty Ludden, for Edward Brown. We pray for Harriet Stockoff, for Joe Thompson, and for Dick Horn. And gracious and holy God, we continue to pray for the presence of your Holy Spirit surrounding the lives of all affected by COVID-19. We pray especially for the sick and dying and also for the lonely and the anxious. We give thanks for all who are working for good in the midst of this time of crisis. We ask you to grant wisdom and discernment to our leaders and patience and calm to all of us that we not be consumed by our fears but that we remember and know that you, O oh God, you are faithful and you will never leave us. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. And now, O oh God, we pray to you in the words that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you again for sharing this time with me. 
I hope that uh, your coming week goes well. As always, just a reminder, feel free to call the church at any time if uh, there's anything that you need, any way that, that we might be able to be helpful to you. And now, go in peace. And as you go, remember, keep the faith, live in hope, and love one another. And may the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen.